back. Hey guys, Anthony Jones here with Top Gun John Boats, and this is chapter five of the Top Gun Porta John build. And this video is regarding the float pods that were custom fabricated for this boat. Big shout out to Ratha at SolidWorks. Big shout out to Nate at Nate's Custom Boats and Accessories. Big shout out to Frankie at Piedmont Fab. Guys, this was a team effort to make these happen. In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that we went through from start to finish to getting these float pods on the 12 foot Top Gun Porta John. I asked two things of you. Number one, if this is your first time dropping by the channel, you kindly subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date on everything that I do, John Boat Build related. Number two, if you have been following the build out of this 12 footer and you have a 12 footer, we need your feedback. What do you think about these float pods? What do you think about the stability and what you're gonna see in this video? Is this a mod you would do to your own 12 foot if this was affordable to do? Would this be something you'd be interested in? Please leave your comments and suggestions and feedback down below. And guys, I'm gonna link everybody that was involved in this project in the description. So check out all their social media platforms and their channels or their Instagrams or their whatevers. Just check it out down below. It's all there. Thanks again, guys. As always, may your tiny boat bills be great. I'm going to quickly catch you up to speed on this project. I purchased this 1232. It was in very rough shape. The transom was absolute toast, but I decided to get it for 150 bucks and start a new video series on my channel, the Top Gun Portage John. I started with an intro video, then I built the transom, then I mounted and sealed the transom, finished the transom, and then I did the launch wheels. And that's where I started to gain some momentum, getting a lot of positive feedback from my subscribers. In fact, this image was sent to me from a subscriber. He used the same wheels I'd recommended, thanked me and said if I ever needed anything, he was a 3D designer in Washington, would love to help me with a project, and his name was Ratha. Fast forward a few months, I'm talking to Nate at Nate's Custom Boats and Accessories, also a member of the Tin Can Crew, and we're going over the 12 footers build plans. Nate's my supplier for all the aluminum I'll be using in this build. He's also fabricating all the custom deck hatches, which can be purchased on tinyboatnation.net. As we discuss build plans and weight distribution, Nate recommended maybe running some float pods on the rear transom, but unfortunately, there's just no room. It's a 12 footer, it's a 32 inch transom, there's transom launch wheels, and you still got to fit an outboard. So I said, hey man, maybe we could run side mount float pods. He said, Great idea. I've never seen it done. Send me some images. These were the first images I sent to Nate, and then we got Ratha involved. In steps Ratha from SolidWorks to turn my bad drawings into what you see before you. The three of us got on a group chat together. We would send images back and forth. Ratha would send a rough design. We would alter the design back to the drawing board. And this was the final design that we came up with after a few months. The final design was actually inspired by ePropulsion's electric outboard. You can kind of see how the contours and shapes mimic each other. And I'm especially proud of this project because we were able to complete it by being in three different locations in the U.S. without ever seeing each other or ever having a boat. Um, Ratha's in Washington, Nate's in Illinois, and I'm in Georgia. Now that we had a final design, Ratha was able to create these details and send them over to Nate where he was able to template everything out and then weld up the pods. These are the images taken in Nate's shop in Illinois. He was able to weld everything there, leak test them, and then ship them down to me in the good old state of Georgia. Oh my gosh, look at that. Now that I had the float pods in hand, the boat was off to Frankie at Piedmont Custom Fab to get the float pods welded to the 12-footer. And um, Frankie did a phenomenal job. The aluminum on this particular boat is super thin, so it was very finicky to get welded on, but uh, Frankie did a great job. You can see the flange there. It attaches to the rib. Flanges overlapping the bottom. They're welded in. And um, I'm going to do a lot of body work on this boat and fill the seams with some kitty hair on the front of the pods to give it a streamlined look. We added some hoops to attach ratchet straps to hold the boat in the bed. And um, once we got them welded on, it was off to the lake to do a new top speed test, see our mile per hour, and then also to test the stability. This footage is from my top speed test with the electric outboard video I did with the 12 footer before I added the pods. And I tried to demonstrate the stability and show how much the boat actually moved when I walked around in it. It was just really sketchy. Um, I knew it was going to be uncomfortable to fish out of unless I did something. And then this footage is me taking it out for the first time after I added the pods. 
I was able to maneuver around the boat, stand on the front bench. I was even able to be goofy for my wife and share my little workout routine while she filmed me. And then I was able to fish out of it. I could now stand on the rear bench and actually cast off the boat and not feel like I was going to fall in the water. And that was a big deal. I was comfortable. And that was the whole point, to make this boat portable, but yet comfortable enough to fish out of. And I feel like we achieved that with these float pods. The stability is night and day difference. Like I could actually walk around in the boat and fish and cast and not feel like I'm just going to fall out of it. Um, like I did the first time I took it out with the e-propulsion outboard. Um, definitely, definitely major, major improvement in the stability with the float pods. Once again, we will revert back to that original video I did, the top speed test run in the 12 footer prior to adding pods. And I actually achieved 11.6 miles per hour in the boat before I added the float pods. Let's get it. And here we are once again, a couple of months later to do another top speed run now with the float pods installed. I've got the same e-propulsion electric outboard on the rear. The e-propulsion battery is up front in the same location as the prior test. Different lake and different conditions, but I was still able to crank out 10.1 miles per hour on the top speed, which isn't bad. So we lost 1.5 miles per hour on the overall speed post pod installation. Modifying these boats is give and take as I've demonstrated in this video with my before and after testing. I lost 12.93% of my overall top speed with the float pods, but I greatly increased the stability. A lot more stability, increased buoyancy. I think that's a good sacrifice as far as a pro and con standpoint goes. I was actually a little bit stressed out about what the boat was going to do in the water. It makes a crazy wake. I don't know if you could see it on video, but like the, uh, the water kind of the pods kind of cut through the water and create this like secondary rooster tail off the side of the boat. It just looks, it just looks really unique. So, um, man, I'm just so pumped and so happy about how it's, how it's turned out out here on the water today. Overall, I'll call this project a success for myself and all those involved. Again, like to thank Ratha at SolidWorks for all the 3D designing. Nate at Nate's Custom Boats and Accessories for fabricating the pods and shipping them down to me. And then Frankie at Piedmont Custom Fab for getting the pods welded on to this old tin can. Next up on the build agenda, bottom coat. I'm going to run a two-part epoxy bottom coat to seal up all the rivets and welds around the perimeter and ensure that this thing is watertight and super slick to cut through the water as best as possible. Thanks for sticking around, guys. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think about these float pods and let me know what you think about the direction that this 12-foot build is going. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel. Give me a like, a share, and we'll catch you on the next one.